We are all searching one way or the other to come up with a suitable study plan in order to make good grades. Personally, I don't think some people are born naturally intelligent and others aren't. Our abilities develop through effort, good teaching and persistence. However good or bad you think you are now, you can get better if you work harder and use your time effectively. Any and everyone can succeed academically only if they put on the right attitude. In today's video, I'm going to show you certain strategies I came up with through observations and experience as a student that will help you during your study sessions. The first step is your choice of study time. Choosing the appropriate time to study is an important technique to optimizing your study sessions. But the question is, what is the appropriate time to study? Or how do I know that this time is the appropriate time to study? Some say that waking up at dawn to study proves very vital. It might or might not be effective for every learner. This is because some people may wake up at dawn feeling all drowsy, whereas others might wake up feeling all energized to study. All this come up because we all have different sleeping patterns. Some are short sleepers, that is to say, those with shorter sleeping cycles, and others are long sleepers, that is to say, those with longer sleeping cycles. Waking up at dawn is a good time for a short sleeper because he doesn't interrupt his sleeping pattern, hence his activeness at dawn. But waking up at dawn is not suitable for a long sleeper because he disrupts his sleeping cycle, hence their drowsiness and reduced concentration to study. Do you remember waking up your younger brother who is fast asleep in order to ask him where he kept the keys to the kitchen? only for him to make utterances that are seemingly not in line with what you are asking. And you might think your brother has lost it, but it's perfectly normal because you disrupted his sleeping cycle when he had a reduced brain activity to process information. And that's very similar to learners who disrupt their sleeping cycle to study. Doing this for a long time will reduce your brain's activity to assimilate information after a study session because the brain won't be fully active to process information. So we realize that it isn't really a universal strategy for every learner. Dawn is the preferred time by many people because of its serenity and calmness as it's believed to be the best time to process information, which isn't always the case. The best thing is to know which category you fall into based on your sleeping cycle, schedule your study sessions according to it, and learn in a conducive environment devoid of distractions, be it dawn or during the day. Let's move on to the second tip. Make time for the things you love to invest before studying. This technique really helps me prevent all distractions during my study session. If you are a lover of social media, spend time on your social media handles before studying. This is to prevent constant interruptions to reply messages or check latest news feed while studying. Personally, I enjoy playing video games and I mostly did it after studying. But I realized that during the latter stages of my study sessions, I usually rushed through lessons since I was in a hurry to finish and play video games. So I decided to play before study sessions and I realized that I was free of the edge to rush through lessons in order to complete fast and play games, hence increasing my concentration and work rates. Understand that every concept is not an isolated island. Every concept length is related to another if you have the habit of not relating new concepts to old ones, then you will find difficulty understanding and recalling them. For example, let's say you are studying something about the respiratory system. 
you come to the understanding that this system is related to other systems, such as a circulatory system. You begin to ask yourself intelligent questions concerning the concept which broadens your scope, hence improving your understanding of that concept. You will realize that not only will you understand the respiratory system, but you will understand the circulatory system too. And whenever you recall the respiratory system, you automatically recall the circulatory system because you associated these two concepts with each other. Before you take any piece of work to study, ask yourself these questions. What is this concept about? What am I looking for? What are the keywords I should familiarize myself with? What method should I employ in understanding these concepts? Imagine a teacher asks two people to read a passage and one is asked to read and look for keywords and the other is required to just read the passage who will do a thorough reading. Of course, it's the student who is asked to find keywords in addition to the reading. Do you know why? Because that pupil has an objective before reading, that is to say, find keywords while reading. What most learners lack these days is, they take a piece of work without any objective in mind. The reading lacks purpose, so they end up reading a piece of work and can't recall a thing after hours of reading. Other readers don't familiarize themselves with vocabularies before reading. This is a very important step to understanding whatever you read. Remember, there is a difference between reading and studying. Studying requires more work rate and dedication, whereas reading doesn't. The next time you have a study session, take 30 minutes of your time to write down what knowledge you are looking forward to acquiring at the end of the session in order to focus your energy and concentration on achieving that objective and also learn the vocabularies of the concepts to widen your scope and understand them. Take breaks within study sessions to ponder over what you have studied so far. Remember, it's the quality of work that matters, not the quantity. Pondering over sessions gives you a deepening insight into a concept. People take breaks during study sessions to reply messages or do something else, which corrupts their concentration when they go back to study. Imagine you took a break during a study session to read a message, only to end up finding a breakup message from a loved one. You have corrupted your concentration for the subsequent hours of your study session. It's better to use that time to reflect on what you have learned. By doing so, intelligent questions pop up which will help you understand the concept even better. The sixth tip is solve questions. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. And you don't light a lamp and put it under the bed. Constant solving of questions on a concept length gives you an idea on how the concept can be posed in different ways or how that concept is related to other topics. By so doing, you'll have an idea on other topics to read on in order to give you more insight. The seventh tip is to have a constant and spaced out revision. It is important to visit your course materials regularly enough and not to leave them at the last minute when exams are due. For retention, right after you learn something, you should review it quickly thereafter to secure the memory. The next time you review it can be spaced out further and the next one even further still. Doing this regularly will lock knowledge in the long term. This is a good way to gain mastery over what you are studying. I asked other friends about their strategies and this is what one had to say. It takes a lot of strategy to learn and excel in everything you do. The most important thing to do is to know oneself. 
There are a lot of individual differences when it comes to the ability to grasp. People may be able to grasp faster than others. To be a learned person, you should be extremely good at what you do and know. In academia, to be able to learn something well, I put in a lot of strategies. For some subjects or courses, I may require little efforts, while with others, I must put in a lot. To excel, you should learn every day, I mean every blessed day of your life. If it will take me two hours to learn a paid document and have the ability to recall without so much effort, then it's worth it. The attitude of chew and pour doesn't help. In fact, I don't know how to chew and pour, so I start learning from the very first day of the semester. <laughs>